All right, so in this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about 2D arrays. Now, as we should already know, an array is simply a whole bunch of things condensed into a small package or a variable. So, if I was to go uh, text and then one and then I don't know 1.0 and then 5,000 and 5,000 and then yada 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 and keep going on like that. Uh, that will go into an array, and this is element 0, element 1, element 2, element 3. So to access that, I just go array 1, and that will print out text. So that's just box underscore p, text. And then I do it again 1. So text 1. And cool. So that's just, that's just the array by itself. So you can actually put an array inside of an array. Yeah, I know that sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? But no, it happens quite frequently actually. So if I was to do something like this, put it onto another line so it looks a bit more professional, I can actually do the following. I can make an array inside the array. So I can go text 1.0. C, and then, I don't know, 900, colon, uh, comma. And the reason why is because you're putting the array inside of the array. So this is element zero now. This whole thing here is element zero. So if you want to have another element after that, so if I want to put in uh, PK, I can do that. So now I can go mesh underscore p array zero and then array one. And now look what it prints out. Text zero uh, one point zero c nine hundred and then pk. So now you have an array inside of an array. And if you want to access that, you can simply just go one. So array zero. So element zero. So we're getting the array of. We're getting the array inside of this array. And then we're going to print out element number one, which is actually this one. So I'll go with number two, so we can get C. Now C, PK. Awesome. So that's how that's how you get a that's how you make two D arrays, and they're quite simple to access that way. And I can make obviously more than one. So if I want to have multiple arrays, I can do that. Uh, we'll just go five now, and then. TT and then just T and then I'll put in 4 and D and well I'm getting a little bit bad at that. Alright so we've got 1 now and we'll get 900 from it so 3 uh, array the third array so element number 2 and we want to get hmm we'll get TT Three and this one's going to be two. Now if we go OK and print it out, what do we get? C nine hundred T C D. All right, and that's uh, the easiest way there is to make two D arrays, and you can add more to that if you want to as well. So that's just how I made it off the bat. Um, you can do that in initialization of an array. So. When I say array is equal to this and I put it in stuff like that, I can put as many things as I want into it. But I cannot just do a 2D array automatically. I can't just go array uh, 0, 4 is equal to, you know, array here and all that stuff. It, it sort of doesn't generally work that way. If you want to make an array inside of an array after the initialization part of it, you have to go array so zero one two three four is equal to array dot new all right and now in array dot in array four which is now an array um oh yeah zero is equal to one hundred now array four one is equal to loud I don't know why I'm thinking of those words, but I am. And now I can just go message box underscore p array. I'll just print out array. And then I'll go 
Which person is going P? And I'll print out full. Okay. Yep, all that stuff. There's our array now, so now we have completely. We've added the fourth, uh, fifth array to it, which is here, 100 and loud. And then it's just that's the stuff inside of it. So, that's all there is to making a 2D array, and that's how you access it. You just go the array inside of it. And, um, yeah, that. Oh, and I forgot to mention you can make a 3D array with this, if you really want to. So, uh, if I had my array as simply 10 and then 200 and then text and whatever on its own, this right here would be considered a 1D array, so one dimensional array. But if I get rid of that and have all this stuff into it, so I have an array inside of an array, that's called a 2D array. And these are generally generally accept, uh, accepted uh, in programming wise. But I can also put an array inside of an array inside of an array. Yeah, that sounds a bit weird, right? Well, over here, if I was to go array uh, 4 and then 2 is equal to array dot new and then go, I'll put that uh, space out a little bit, array 4 2 0 0 is equal to uh, 3d array and then I print out array 4 so I can do that uh, message box underscore p array 4 and then 2 we are going to have an array inside of an array inside of an array take a look okay now we have the, the uh, initial array so the one we're checking that's what these go back are for and then we have the first array we have in there so element 0 element 1 array, element 2 array, element 3 array element 4 array and inside of the element 4 array, array the uh, 0, 1, 2, the second element in the array itself is an array. Whew, okay. So we have an array inside of an array inside of an array. <laughs> okay. And you can make 3Ds, 3D arrays if you want. See? An array. Again. But generally, the only ones you should make are 2D array, 1D arrays and 2D arrays. So you can make 3D arrays for the RPG Maker scripts if you want to. Uh, but if you would ever go into a job interview, never show them 3D arrays. It is not generally accepted that well worldwide in programming to be using 3D arrays and 4, you can even do 4D arrays if you want to. So I can put an array inside of an array inside of an array inside of an array. Don't do that. For God's sake, just don't do that. That's really bad. Alright? So if you ever go to a job interview showing people your programming skills, don't show them 3D arrays. They don't want that. There's better ways to do things than to use 3D arrays. Alright? So if you want to use it, go for it. But don't show people if you want to have a job. Alright? So 2D, 1D arrays and 2D arrays are fine. Don't show other people 3D arrays unless you want them to bite your head off and not employ you. Because that's what they will do. Alright, that's all there is to do uh, 2D array parts of it. I'm probably not going to show you... I'm probably not going to show examples or ever use 3D arrays. Because I don't use them. Um, a better alternative to using 3D arrays would be using hash. And that's in the next tutorial. But for now, I think what I'll do is I'll get rid of all this. And I'll show you an example of where I've actually used 2D arrays. So I'll just load up my uh, other project. No. Yep, that's the one. Um, I have this random battle theme somewhere. There it is. Two plus one. All right. And I've made a, a an a 2D array. So you can see random battle themes. That's the Adipo region part of it. And you can go battle one, volume, pitch, and all that stuff, and uh, just fills in. So you can make as many as you want. So an array inside of an array, which houses the information for a battle theme. So town one, which I've named that just for the sake of putting it as town one which I've noticed some people have left when they've used the scripts, so I find that pretty funny. Um, volume and pitch. Quite simple what that is. Now when we go down into the actual script itself, and um, since this was made a long time ago, I don't need that. 
Yes, we were all beginners at one point. Alright, we go random, D for 3 uh, random battle themes array dot size. So that's um, getting the size of this array, which, you know, this is 1, that's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this, it's not counting these as part of the size, it's just counting the um, slot they're taking. So this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4, this is 5, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Alright? And it's filling them in and it's going to get a random battle number out of the size. And then once you get the uh, battle number, you then go rpgbgm.new and you get the actual, uh, you get the element at that point. So if we go on random battle from the size, which is 10, it'll get it'll return a number from 0 to 9. So then we go uh, 0, 0, so 0 here beating the actual name, and then the volume, then the pitch, and then play it. Now, I like to think that if I was to get rid of this, and all this, and just put an asterisk in front of it, it should still work, but I'm not too sure. We're about to find out, aren't we? New game. You do battles, don't you? I think you do. Yep, you do. This is gonna be a piece of cake. Alright, both again. See, as you can see, it's doing random battle games. Gotta know when to go. Alright, and that's what I use the uh, 2D arrays for in my uh, script. Alright, that's all there is to 2D arrays. Um, next tutorial is going to be in Hash, which is a uh, more accepted version of a 3D array in my opinion. So if you need to make a 3D array, Hash is a better. But um, Hash on its own is uh, what you'd call a dictionary for uh, your program. And it's more simpler to go uh, to explain that when I go through the tutorial. So until then, uh, stay safe.